signing off another weekly vlog. I think the uh, last week's has just gone live, and it is Friday, and it's lunchtime, and I just received a record in the post. So first of all, we'll show you that, and then we'll crack on with the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I think I promised this one a couple of weeks ago. It's the... How is it 25 years old? It's 25th anniversary copy of the Fat of the Land by the Prodigy, which just literally just arrived. It's still cold because it's been in the mail van, um, and it is on silver vinyl. You get two records. Uh, so I'm going to have to give this a listen at some point. I'm pretty behind on my listing, actually, to be honest. And I have ordered two new records since now. I think one I've already mentioned, and another one Gemma mentioned, so it's her fault, not me. Is it odd that I'm listening to the band that I'm seeing tonight, playing the album that they're going to play tonight? Um, but yeah, tonight is gig night. Um, first gig since 2020 March, when we went to see A Winged Victory for the Sullen in the church in Liverpool, um, which was kind of epic. And this band's going to be even more epic, I think. We lost the sea. They are genuinely probably one of my favourite bands and they are playing pretty much my absolute favourite album which is called um, Departure Songs so historically they were actually a metal band, they had a singer who was like a, did that raw, raw metal stuff, unfortunately he passed away and when he did they didn't continue with the vocalist, they decided to go all instrumental, and they do occasionally have a few tracks with a bit of vocal in but for the most part it's instrumental now um, but the four other bands that are playing on the sets, that are playing sets tonight, are all metal bands. So I'm going to be a bit of a fish out of water, because not the biggest metal fan. <laughs> but I'm kind of looking forward to it, to be honest, to seeing some music that kind of pushes me out of the comfort zone a little bit. And I've had a listen to a few of them, and uh, the band Ithaca do, do sound pretty cool actually. So I'm uh, I'm intrigued to see them live, and I want to see Pupil Slicer for the name alone. Going to miss the first band, which is called Mastiff, because of being at work. And I will probably not see the whole of the last band, which are called Celeste. And I had to remember that one. They're a French metal band, because uh, they're going on until about half eleven, and I want to kind of get off and get home. So, uh, yeah, it's over in Manchester at uh, Baller Exhibition Centre. Um, I haven't been there since it, they used to do computer fairs when I was uh, like in my 20s. I used to go and buy PC parts from there. Um, but yeah, it looks from all from what I've heard, it's a good venue, so that should be good. Found somewhere nearby to park, and we'll uh, hopefully enjoy that. Uh, there is a big festival tomorrow at the same site, so this is like the warm not the warm up because it's different bands playing other than Wheel Lost See, but it's like a pre event event. So the the, the fe festival tomorrow is called Damnation. Uh, again, it's all metal. Um, interestingly, I'm not the biggest metal fan, but there's a band called Pig Destroyer that are playing that I quite like. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going tomorrow um, I, I kind of picked on well because we lost to see her playing my all time favourite album tonight and tomorrow they're just doing a set of uh, other material but they only have about, which I'd love to see as well don't get me wrong, but they only have about 45 minutes to play and some of the songs are like 10-15 minutes long <laughs> anyway we'll catch up with you probably when I get to Manchester because I need to crack on and do some work So before we go in there, this is me after the fact by the way, so before we go into the venue I just want to warn you that I'm going to post some of the bands but there will be flashing lights, uh, obviously strobing stuff and a lot of loud music. So if you're not interested, uh, skip on a bit until the end of the gig and we'll catch up there. See you inside. And just like that we're in Manchester, in an industrial estate, middle of nowhere. Well actually Trafford Centre is not like 10 minutes drive away from here. But yeah, I've actually gone through the gate. I think I just need to check in when I get the front. And you can obviously hear that bands are playing. Well, I got in just as the first band ended. I think I caught about a second of them playing. They were a little bit loud.
jump cut we are back in the car um, <laughs> you may notice that I miss one of the bands it's been a long day bit of light it's been a long day I'm absolutely shattered so I decided to call it uh, apologies to Celeste I'm sure they're watching <laughs> but I was just absolutely deadbeat so I, uh, I made, made me escape to a load of uh, metalers singing I want it that way uh, they were all sat outside because uh, the band had finished well actually I don't think so most of them were watching the band but there we go but yeah it was fantastic that um, I've seen a lot of bands in my time hundreds hundreds of bands that would be definitely top five material that one possibly top three uh, possibly number one I don't know uh, yeah they were just unbelievable so good such a good set um, yeah can't really say any more than that what I'll do is um, I will link to a full set by them so I knew that was gonna happen so if you like what you heard you can go and have a like watch the whole set which would be the same set that I've just seen them play because it's one of their albums so anyway I'm gonna get home now and we'll catch up with you probably tomorrow at this rate Good morning, it is Saturday now, and yeah, I survived, <laughs> we got home okay, I had a little bit of food before bed and then went to bed and woke up feeling terrible, like I'd been hungover, which I hadn't, because I hadn't drunk. <laughs> I'm just watching Pixie at the corner of my eye, she's just exploring uh, new things, well not new things, I, I went shopping this morning, and I bought a box of beer, 10, ten Budweiser's, I'm trying to cut back a little bit, you know. Um, and eight IPS. Um, but yeah, uh, it was one of the ones with the handle and I watched the kitchen, the handle snapped and it fell on the floor, which kind of one begs the question why they bother putting the handles on 10 packs of beers now. Uh, but today we're cooking. Gemma's picked a recipe about a slow cooking book, I'll show you later. Um, but it is like it's a beef, French beef borgen or borgen, borgen, borgen stew, red wine. Yeah. <laughs> so I got all the recipe instructions for that, so we need to get that on in quick time and I do have a large box out there and it's one of those garden storage things you know the ones that you put like your um your lawnmower in or your bins in so uh because I noticed all of the stuff that's hidden under the the garden sofa is just letting it pull water up so I'd like to try and get that sorted hopefully today I might be able to build that if not it's gonna have to wait till next weekend but it's really in the way so I would like to get it done now Tickling my leg with the whiskers. <laughs> Pixie, that is not Gem. Um, but anyway, other than that today, and the cooking, it's going to be a fairly relaxed one. I need to tidy the kitchen. <laughs> the camera's shaking, partly because I'm holding it with me thumb, and partly because she's just wandered up and started headbutting the bottom of it. Pixie, not Gem. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, um... I do need to do some kitchen tidying before we cook, so I'll get on with that and we'll catch up when we're cooking. Oh, she's here. <laughs> she's hiding. Oh, I didn't show you my t-shirts that I bought as well. Um, I bought these. I don't I don't normally buy more than a t-shirt at a gig, but because this band's from Australia and getting the t-shirts shipped from Australia is a pain, I bought two. I bought this one, which I didn't plan on buying, but when I saw it, I loved it, so I bought it. There it is. <laughs> Sorry. It says, We Lost the Sea, Triumph and Disaster, which is the album after the one that they played last night. And, oh my god, I'm making a mess. And there's a cat joining me. <laughs> Hello, pigs. Uh, she's now stood on the other t-shirt. Can I have this, please? Thank you. And the other t-shirt is the album that they actually played last night. Then I can't get straight. There it is. These are massive t-shirts. They're, they're only XL. We lost the C. And the album's called Departure Songs. It doesn't say it on there. They're only XL shirts, but they're huge. Uh, uh, extra large people larger in Australia than they are over here. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Since I couldn't get... I can't easily... To my knowledge, I can't easily get those shirts in the UK without paying like import duty and all sorts. And then waiting two weeks for it to be delivered. 
at least. Uh, I thought I'd pick two of them up. Plus, it mean kind of justifies the band coming over here if I'm going to buy some merch off them, doesn't it? Not that I'm sure 40 quid goes very far in flights for an entire band, crew and kit from Australia, but there we go. That band now is actually going to go out and tour around Europe for the rest of the month. And then I think they have a gig in London before that. Well, they're playing Manchester again today, actually. But after that, they're out around Europe for the month. Uh, and then at the end of November, well, 21st-ish, I think, uh, of November, they're back in London. And then from there, they leave the country and go back home to Australia. And, I mean, I don't think they're going to come over here very often. So it was definitely worth going over at Manchester to see them. She's so cute this morning. She's got like a mere cat tail look patch up the back and she runs around. She's been very needy this morning and very meowy. You can probably hear her in the background then. Anyway, this has gone on four and a half minutes, which is four and a half minutes too long, so we'll catch up later. So this is the slow cooker book that we use. The slow cooker book. <laughs> it's called, very imaginative title, by Heather Winnie. I think we got this from like Asda or someone. And here's the recipe. Uh, so obviously because it's a recipe book recipe, I can't just... Um, post a link to it uh, but yeah I'm gonna crack on and I'll show you some steps along the way it serves four so I'm cutting it in half so it's just for the two of us um, I might up a few extras because I did actually buy too little meat so I'll up, up the bacon and up the mushrooms and I'll show you some steps along the way straight in with the cooking I have fried some bacon and now I'm browning off the beef I've also uh, fried the onions, a bit over fried them, oops. And now I'm frying the mushrooms in the red wine and the stock with all the spices, which looks good as I fry and I'm boiling them, I guess, but you know what I mean. I also did this to the cookbook, oops. So with the mushrooms done, I've thrown everything in the slow cooker, stuck it on low, and that's where it's gonna sit now for the rest of the day. Looks good, it smells amazing as well. So the only real slip up I had with the whole thing was uh, it asked me to put flour into the pan after I, I'd cooked everything so I'd followed the instructions but I didn't sieve the flour and it all clumped up. So what I did was strained all of the juices, got rid of the lumps and sieved some flour into it and now it's fine. It's always good when you can recover it. It looks quite smooth and hopefully it should taste good because it smells amazing. Uh, what we're going to do with that is we'll have it with either some, we've got some sliced potatoes uh, that Gemma bought from Tesco earlier in the week and we'll do some veggies and I've got some French bread so we'll have it to uh, maybe mop some of the juice up with some French bread. Yeah, this box is... <laughs> <laughs> Hello Pixie, just thank you. This box is basically taking over the kitchen at the minute. Uh, the step ladder is one of the things that's going to go in it. And also buckets that have been in our kitchen for I don't know how long can go in it as well. Well that was hard work getting out of here. But it's out here now. <laughs> I could have a lie down. Um, it would have been nice to be able to pressure wash the floor. But uh, let's just say someone's borrowed me pressure washer and hasn't brought it back yet. Thanks Matt. Step one and I'm already shattered. It is now re released from its uh, impenetrable cardboard prison. Step one, level the ground surface. Close enough. Would you believe it actually uh, sits quite, quite well though? It's not too wobbly. <laughs> also, I couldn't find the back and it was inside hidden away. It's quite cleverly packaged this. Anyway, let's commence building. I was going to time lapse this, but I don't think it's going to take me that long. But that's the sides done. So far, so good. Back's gone up, including bolting in the first screws, which I didn't manage to cross thread or break. Handy to use the box as a base to build it on while it's wet, and definitely consider using a big cordless screwdriver like that. Lid's on. Now I need nine screws going at the back of it. I think this is where people said they needed to drill it, but it's just a little bit of sprue work, not sprue, a little bit of moulding stuff. I could probably put my finger through it if I tried hard enough. Yeah. But yeah, it's going together really easy, this. I think it said two people, which I guess for moving it when it's full, yeah. But to actually put it together, I've not really struggled so far. Doors fitted. This was the most awkward part, because you've got to squeeze them in there. There we go. Gas struts fitted as well. Put what it's all. There's like a kick lock there. Just so you know, 
it's intended for storage only and not you, you can't live in this I know you want to but you can't live in it also you're probably supposed to anchor it to the floor so one of the neighbors might end up with it next time there's a storm and we're done just like that actually pretty easy to go together that it's uh, quite good to know because I'm probably going to look at this company for a shed they do similar style but a shed uh, so this was by Keter, K-E-T-E-R, they're available on Amazon, this was 116 quid. it's currently on offer, it probably won't be by the time the video goes live, but the one without the gas struts is always like 125 uh, so yeah, it went together really easy, uh, let's just show you how it all works. Got a little kick doodad, look. You can put a padlock through there, lid comes down, catches, so you can put a padlock through there and there then and lock the whole thing. So you wouldn't need one there, would you? You'd just do it there. Obviously it's not entirely secure, so I wouldn't keep anything it valuable in here. Uh, some of the little things that I did quite like about this, I don't know if I'll ever use it, sorry, not dummy kick thing, there we go. It does have space for shelves, so you can get wooden shelves cut to fit. Just fasten shelves in and have some extra storage if that's what you want. I don't know if I'll do that, but it's there. Guy Fox Day, apparently. Doors open reasonably wide. Right the way around on that side, that side's hit the grass, but that's fine. It's alright, that, isn't it? So, this is the couch from summer, which is now covered over. But it was getting gigantic pools of water on it, which it won't get anymore because I've managed to remove all the uh, stuff that was ca causing those pools. If I just spin around here, we have one tub. And the thing I quite like is I don't actually have to open the front, I can just pop things in over the top. So I managed to get some of the stuff that'll rust away and Gemma's figures and things like that. There's a few more things from the house, a few more buckets that I'll pop in here, but otherwise it's done. So uh, it looks like I timed the finishing of that uh, storage off just right to get everything in there. And I've just popped out with the step ladder and put that out there. And it's absolutely bouncing down out there now. Oh dear. Do you know what though? That storage went together so easily. I'm almost tempted to get another one at some point. And just have a row of them. Oh, I've just given that a stir. Doesn't that look good? Jammer's <laughs> home. Enjoy your stew. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Looks good. I'm hoping it tastes as good as it looks. Well, that's how the shallots are supposed to be, according to the recipe. Oh, okay. you, you don't chop them, you leave them whole. That's fine. Apologies for the noise outside, it's a uh, it's, uh, guy folks now. <laughs> anyway, how's your day been? It's okay, fine, we're quick. Good. Enjoy your dinner? I will. Tuck in time. Tuck in time, just letting it cool down, it looks very warm. Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? Did you enjoy your dinner, honey? I did, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm currently playing with these two. Uh, this is Reggie's first uh, Guy Fawkes night in the house. He, his last Guy Fawkes night was spent in the wild, out, out you know, outdoors, as a stray, as a stray little kitten, tiny little kitten. So he's been a bit unsure, but he's we've been playing with him quite a bit, and it seems to have settled him right down. He's quite vicious for this Tyler. So funny when little, so see if I can get him to do it. We're also watching Tangled Up and Fun with their new puppy in the background, which is very, very cute. Their new puppy isn't a pumpkin, by the way, they're, they're, they're now doing some pumpkin things. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, meow, meow, trying to bite it. Uh, good, good, good morning, yes. Um, we'll get to the zoo in a bit. First of all, we're watching Carmen and Brian, she's in Myrtle Beach. We're actually like, we've watched so many of our videos of Myrtle Beach now, we're almost tempted to try and fit that into a holiday at some point, because it looks nice, doesn't it? Because we're thinking of uh, 2024 not being Florida, I mean, we're thinking maybe, maybe East Coast road trip, something like that. We're doing some research into that, well, we, we will do some research, we haven't yet. But anyway, Zoo, uh, we're going to go and eat at the Oak Field, because now we know we can book it because we were daft last week uh, and then we're going to pick up some more art you've bought more art haven't you? <laughs> I don't, you don't have any walls left but Gemma's bought more art 
What size is it? I think it's a size. Oh, the little one. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, so we could probably fit it underneath those two, to, to be honest. And also, he was a good one last night. After being a little bit stressed out at first, he ended up playing with toys in the living room, didn't you, mister? We jumped cut heavily to Monday. We didn't vlog anything else yesterday after we got back from the zoo. Uh, and today the, the fridge door handle started to break. And some people might say, Mark, do you still use your 3D printer for anything? There's my new fridge door handle. There we go, matching fridge door handles. Is it perfect? Nope. Can I open the fridge with it? Yep, it'll do for me. Fridge needs a clean to get all the magnets off. Only slight issue with the uh, printing of the fridge door handles is it took about eight hours a piece. <laughs> but I mean, the actual door handles for that fridge would have cost I think like 30 pound to replace them. Assuming you can even get hold of them now because the fridge is about 15 years old. Uh, and we could probably put a generic one on there but I don't think I'd even be able to get that for less than a few pounds. And those cost me probably 20, 30 p in plastic and a small amount in electricity. Pretty good going. And of course, the new segment of our weekly vlog is Cats in the Garden. Today we appear to have a, a tabby that I'm not familiar with and a tabby and white cat that I'm also not familiar with, although I suspect it might be our new next door neighbours. I don't know. But yeah, these are solid. 12 out of 10 cats, even though one of them is clearly doing something in the garden it shouldn't be. Happy Wednesday, honey. Happy Wednesday. I need to end this vlog. I mean, I probably should have ended it Sunday, really, because we haven't really done a huge yeah, amount, have we? Yeah. yeah. Busy times. You can show your advent calendar. Oh yeah, tell me about me an advent calendar. It is a hotel chocolate. It's caramel, caramel milk. Chocolate, your yeah. Look. Spoiler. Anyway. So, what are we doing next weekend? I don't know, you know. We don't have to decide stuff, we've got to do it. Nah. We're rubbish. But it'll be in the vlog. We might, it might yeah. be a shorter one next weekend, because this one's probably going to be quite long. And we also have a zoo vlog that I need to edit, yeah, so I've got two. Yeah, we decided what we're doing at the weekend, whether we're going to go to the zoo again or whether um, we do something else. Did you have, excuse me, did you have a nice weekend? I did, yeah. Me too. The zoo was really good. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed my gig, nice. and I was really happy that the uh, with the stories that I bought, that they, that's really helped out of the kitchen. Okay, never mind. <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, anyway. So we'll see you in the next one, yeah. whenever that may be, or whatever that may be doing. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, and send a letter to two of your closest friends advising them of the channel. If they don't watch the channel, then bad things will happen to them. That, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. That's don't horrible. Hate letters. Email, mails, uh, yeah. Anyway, but yes, thank you for watching. See you soon. Goodbye. Close up, Gemma.